from this subject subject I have set my face like a flint father bless us now as we preach the word of the Lord God bless us to preach it with cl clarity and precision save the soul that's near as hell touch that dad touch that mom touch that son touch that daughter in Jesus name amen Therefore have I set my face like a flint. By the way of introduction, the word flint and the Hebrew word is kalamish uh, is a mind rock. Flint, a mind rock known for its hardness. Flint rock. Flint. Flint is used in a simile indicating hardness, fairness, and resolve. Everybody say flint. flint. You know, I remember we used to discover these flint arrowheads, stones that Indians shaped to make arrows, made them out of, uh, uh, out of flint. Amen. So the, the, the flint is a crypto crystalline, uh, sedimentary crypto crystalline in that tiny crystals hardened together make this material that we call flint. Amen. Set my face like a flint means to be courageous, to be firm and resolved to accomplish a certain thing in spite of scorn and hatred that may be heaped upon you. When you set your face like a flint, you decide that come what may, no matter what, no excuses, that even if it costs your life, you're going to do that thing. To set your face like flint means you anticipate pushback. You anticipate uh, having to swim upstream. Amen. People who set their face like flint. They're not people who are not afraid. Because for there to be courage, fear has to be present. For a person to be courageous, you, you're not courageous if there's no danger. If there's no possibility that things can go wrong, there's no chance that you may be humiliated, then there is no courage. Praise the Lord. For, for, for it to, to work, you got to know from the onset that somebody is going to oppose me. Somebody will have something to say about this. If I open my mouth at work and I speak up, I know if before I do it that it may cost me a promotion. It may cost me ostracism. It may cost me my employment. And yet, you decide to do it regardless, that act 
is setting your face like a flint. Praise the Lord. You know that hatred is coming. You know, oh, they're going to say something. They're going to blow me up online. <laughs> they're going to call me everything but a child of God. Amen. But I'm going to say it anyhow. Oh, I'm going to do what is right regardless to what they say. Most people don't have that quality. Most people are politicians. Most people are very calculating. They ask, is it safe? They ask, what's in it for me? They ask, is it advantageous? God's servant asks, is it right? Praise the Lord. If it's right, the child of God moves forward with it. In our text, the suffering servant, and I'm going to talk to you about his identity and identities in just a moment, said, I have set my face like a flint. My question to you is, have we set our face like a flint? Especially when it comes to to serving the God of the Bible. See, you can set your face like a flint to do this applies to anything. You can set your face like a flint and decide you're going to murder someone. You can set your face like a flint and decide that you're going to leave your husband or leave your wife or cheat on them, or steal money, or whatever you set your mind to do, knowing that danger lies ahead. The context of our text is, though, is that the servant decided that come what may, that they were going to do what the Lord said do. And so that is... Uh, my challenge, Upper Room, and those who are streaming today in this day and time where you, you really got to choose. I, I, I keep bringing it up. God gave me a word of prophecy some 10, maybe 20 years ago. I, I said that there would come a divide in the body of Christ. Not in the, between the world and the church, because there's already one there. But in the body of Christ, the Bible-believing Christians and the non-Bible-believing Christians, if there's such a thing. But for the sake of this discussion, now we know you can't be a non-Bible-believing Christian, but there are many Christians who don't believe the Bible. There are many Christians who today believe parts of the Bible. They believe the parts that they like and then the parts that they don't like, they readily, uh, just uh, unexplainably dismiss. It's, it's the times in which we live. But I prophesied that there would come a day where there would come a divide between the Christians who would believe the Bible and the Christians who wouldn't. And who would usher in this divide would be the world. Because the world is demanding as never before that we make a choice. The world is saying to us, either you're with us or you're against us. If you're with us, we can put you on television. We can promote you. We can do all kinds of things for you if you're with us. But if you're against us, we're going to label you. We're going to ostracize you. We're going to criticize you. We will seek to marginalize you. We will make you appear to be a kook, appear to be crazy, appear to be judgmental. Isn't that the word that's thrown around uh, so much now? Everybody calls us 
judgmental. And, and uh, one of the buzz phrases of the days in which we live now, uh, one of the more popular phrases is, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. No matter what I do, don't judge me. And then there are people who have said, you know, I'm an individual who do not judge anyone on anything. Well, let me tell you something. The decision not to judge is a judgment. It is a judgment that you have rendered. You have determined, you must be God, you have determined that, 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 that you should have no discernment, that there should be no distinctions between actions and thoughts and things that are right and that are wrong. So therefore, no matter what people do, you have no thought, no opinion, you come to no conclusion, you have nothing you, in your mind. One act is the same as another. Now, you know you can't really live like that. Because some of the things that we have no judgment on, I don't, I don't judge adulterers. I don't judge. Well, if, if that's what they want to do, then that's what they want to do. That ain't my business. You don't judge them until your spouse cheats on you. <laughs> then all of a sudden, it's wrong. There is a, an opinion now. See, you don't, I don't judge thieves. Pe perhaps they stole because they were hungry. I, I don't, maybe they hijacked that car because they needed a ride until you walk out one day <laughs> on your way to work and your car is gone. All of a sudden, you have an opinion on it. You don't judge pedophiles. You understand pedophiles. Till your child come home and say, Mommy, the teacher or the preacher or the priest or the instructor touched me, Mommy. Where'd they touch you? Mommy, they touched me down there. All of a sudden now, you have an opinion on it. Oh, yeah. You have an opinion. So really, to be honest with you, you can't live without being discerning. You can't live without judging. The Bible says, judge not lest ye be judged. For the same judgment you meet shall be meted out to you again. That is, make sure when you pass in judgment that you ain't doing the same thing. So, let me move on from this. I, I want you to hear me today. My... Son-in-law said something that I think will stay with me perhaps for the rest of my life. And I've mentioned it on more than one occasion, and I'll probably mention it some more. We lost a customer a few weeks ago at our school. We have a premier preschool. Um, unless the numbers have changed, we have the largest preschool in this area. A preschool have five stars, highest ratings. We do good business. Praise the Lord. I've often congratulated uh, Evangelist Amin Chukwu on the great job she's done with the school. A Muslim couple brought their child to our school because of the curriculum, because of the success of the school. And by the way, it blesses me that when we had our uh, school and we went up to the 12th grade before we sold it, it blessed me. Now you can look in the NFL and in certain uh, professional areas in the country and I see alumni of our school. I said, Lord, I thank you that we had a hand in that person's success. But he was going to put out his child in our school. And they wanted to wait through the weekend and make a decision. The daddy of the child looked me up online. And when he looked me up online, he looked, up, he looked at the positions I take when I preach. 
And he called back and said, we will not be putting our child in your school. For we are Muslims. And your pastor believes that Jesus Christ is the only God. And that the God of the Bible is the only God. And so we don't want our child in that environment. Because he said, there's no way that they're not going to tell our child that. I'm proud of that. The, the comment, I'm proud of that. I praise the Lord for that. That is a medal. The comment that my son-in-law made was, he said, upon hearing the story, he said, conviction recognizes conviction. Conviction recognizes conviction. Most Muslims in America aren't accustomed to Christians who have conviction. Most people aren't accustomed to Christians who have convictions. Most Christians today, many, do not have convictions. We have convictions on anything. We, we, our, our only conviction seems to be to be liked, to be accepted, to be politically correct. But conviction recognizes conviction. And I want to say to you, people may not agree with your conviction, your convictions. People may not like your convictions. But I tell you what, people will respect you for your convictions. Amen. And at the end of the day, it is more important to be respected than it is to be liked. Praise the Lord. That, that man may never darken the door of this church. He may never put their child in our school. But that man respects me because here's what he know. He know that I know that he believe that the only God there is, is Allah. And he knows that I know that where he goes and worship, that's all they say, is that Allah is the only God. There is no other God but Allah. Well, I know now that he knows that there is a Christian preacher across town who believes that the God of the Bible is the only God that there is. Praise the Lord. And uh, just as he has his conviction, I have mine. Praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, if you read uh, the writings of Ezekiel, Chapter 3 and verse 8, the Bible says, Behold, I have made, look at this, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their forehead. And as adamant, as a diamond harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Fear them not. Neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. That is, I have made you to have conviction and to take your convictions and take your head and clash with theirs. They have theirs, but you have yours. The true Christian is not called to cower. Oh my, to just be afraid and uh, uh, to go along, to get along. But the Christian is called to stand up. To stand up. To stand up for what is right. Yes, yes. And if you read Ezekiel uh, chapter uh, number uh, 3, um, you'll see where God tells Ezekiel, he gives him the word of the Lord. And he gives it to him. And the words are written on both sides of the paper of the papyrus and he's told to eat the whole roll now chapter 2 tells us that the word is filled with lamentations it's filled with mourning and it's filled with woe that's the last clause of chapter 2 the last verse of chapter 2 because Israel was rebellious and he says preach to them but when uh, Ezekiel ate the word the Bible tells us in, in, in verse 3 the last clause that to Ezekiel, even though that word was a word filled with woe, lamentation, correction, and rebuke for the wicked, 
Ezekiel said when he ate it that it was like honey and sweet to his taste. See, I wonder today how many believers still find the word to be sweet or have the word, have the world cause you to view God's word as being bitter. Do you now see the Bible as being in the way? Have you now become a Christian like some of those other Christians who say, let's just keep the scriptures out of it? No, no. For the believer, the scriptures are sweet to our taste. The Bible says your word is sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. My concern is that there are too many believers who uh, are so-called who no longer find the word of God, the statutes of God, the standards of God, the corrections of God, the walls of God, sweet. And if you got a preacher who's preaching it and it's not sweet to him, it most certainly won't be sweet. It most certainly won't be effective to those who have come to hear him. Sometimes the preacher who loves the word of God is mistaken as being arrogant. I've had that charge. They mistake confidence and conviction with arrogance and headedness. No, we're not arrogant, but we are confident. We do believe that the Bible is the word of God. Therefore, we have set our face like flint. I'm preaching. I'm preaching. We're living in a time, saints, where the believers can no longer. Hear me now. Hear me. I'll be done in just a few minutes. I won't preach till 3 o'clock. The believers can no longer be vacillators. Believers can't alternate between different opinions. Believers can't be indecisive. The world is not going to allow indecisiveness. Indecisiveness is, is gobbling up our children. Vacillations are destroying our marriages, destroying our homes, destroying our country, acting like we don't know what right is and what wrong is. I remember one time, Oprah introduced, she asked a question on her show that was a shot fired around the world. She said, what is normal? As though there is no such thing. I said, that's the devil. Praise the Lord. There is such a thing as normal. You've known what normal is all your life. And all of a sudden, now the devil want to convince you that nothing is normal, which is designed to confuse us. And look at where we've gone since uh, the, uh, the breakdown, the degeneration since those questions have been introduced. We got men walking around thinking that they're women. Women walking around thinking like they, that they're men. The, the, the many times now when you look at the genders, it is indistinguishable. When the Bible is clear that, the, that upon a glance, Upon a glance, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, that upon a glance, you're supposed to be able to discern. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, chapter 11, so forth in the Bible. You're supposed to be able to discern between the sexes. And yet now we're in a day where men look like women and women look like men. And we all sit around and pretend like that is normal. That is dark thinking. That is dark thinking that is wrong that is wrong it's 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 not it doesn't come from a healthy mind the leading man at um john hopkins the leading man who used to perform all of the transgender operations quit quit and wrote an op-ed and wrote that we should not encourage this he said because the people are sick and said in time they change their minds but much of this surgery is irreversible and he quit and uh, and and as long as he was performing the surgery the media and the world applauded him 
when he then said you can't do this no more, he became a piranha. We can't vacillate. Jesus asked the question of the multitude. He said, when you went out to hear John the Baptist preach, he said in Matthew 11 and verse 7, what did you go out for to hear? He said, did you go out to hear a reed shaken in the wind, a vacillating preacher, a preacher who goes to back and forth, a preacher who is afraid to make a stand, a preacher who constantly changes his position, a preacher who is uncertain, a preacher who apologizes for God's truth. He said, what did you go out to hear? John was not a vacillator. John was a preacher. He was a man of God who said what he meant and meant what he said, who spoke for the Lord. Saints, we must set our face like Flint. Our text today is a heart-to-heart -heart conversation that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the God of their forefathers, the God who created a race. He cre well, first of all, he created the human race. But then after creating the human race, after Genesis uh, chapter 11, we find him beginning to work to create another race, the Hebrews. He reached over into Ur of the Chaldees and found a heathen, brown-skinned heathen serving the God of the Babylonians, living in a place called the Cradle of Civilization, Mesopotamia. Man didn't know God. You know what God did? He appeared to him. He let God see. He let this man see a vision of him. And when he saw the Lord, it changed him forever. He didn't have a Bible. He didn't have a priest. There was no Ten Commandments. There was no Moses. There was no law. There was nothing. But he heard a voice and saw a vision of God. The Bible said the Lord had appeared unto him and told him as a lad of a boy, leave your father's house and go to a land that I will show you. And the boy's name was Abram. When the time was right, God changed his name and called him Abraham and then told him, so I'm going to make a race. You're going to be the father of many nations and through you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed and said the sign that will distinguish you from the rest of the world is not color. He said, you won't be that one is black and the other is white. They were all brown over there. He said it will be the distinguishing mark will be two things. Number one, it will be circumcision. You will circumcise every male on the eighth day that is born. And then the other thing that would distinguish you from the rest of the world would be your lifestyle. I'll give you a diet of what you can eat. I'll show you how to live. And I want to use you, God Almighty, to win the world. So the God of the Bible is having a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Israel. Are you with me? And the point of the talk, because you see, the people didn't live up to what God called them to do. Israel failed. But God is still going to work his plan. But at this point, uh, they, they were upset with God. And they blamed the Lord for their calamity point of Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 1 and down is God telling them I'm not the cause of your nat national calamity. I'm not the reason why you've gone into bondage. I'm not the reason why your 
uh, economics collapsed, jobs failed, and you went into bondage with the Chaldees. I'm not why this happened. It's not that I didn't keep my word. He points out that the culprit for your national fall is your sin. God often gets the blame for the consequences of sin. We blame him. We mess up. We disobey. We break the law. We act the fool. The consequences of that bad action comes. Then we blame God for the consequences. Say, God, you didn't do me right. But we did it. Remember this about sin. Sin carries the seed of its own destruction. The Bible says this. It's worth noting here in Numbers 32 and verse 23. The very last clause says, be sure your sins will find you out. That is, be sure your sins will catch up to you. So come out while there's time. If God has given you grace, stop. Thank the Lord that you didn't get caught. Thank God that it didn't go south. But if you stay in it, be sure your sins will catch up to you. And when they catch up to you, oh, once that happens, you cannot reverse that. It, it's, 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 it's out of control when it catches up to you. So he says in our text, uh, Thus saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorce? They had uh, accused the Lord of divorcing Israel. Praise the Lord. In ancient Israel, a husband had the exclusive power to hand an unfaithful wife a writ of divorcement. Upon that document, she had uh, no way to appeal. She had no recourse. She was out. The faithful in Israel were concerned that God had divorced the nation. They were concerned that their calamities had come because God had divorced them and not uh, here that God had divorced Israel in general but the southern kingdom in particular. Because if you read Jeremiah chapter 3 for you Bible students out there and verse 8 it says Jeremiah 3 and 8 it says and I saw when for all the causes whereby backslidden Israel committed adultery that is they, they begin to serve other gods. I had to put her away and give her a bill of divorcement. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot. God did divorce the northern kingdom, and they went into bondage to Assyria. The southern kingdom got in trouble and went into bondage with the Babylonians. But even though God put away the southern kingdom, God did not give Zion, which is Jerusalem, a bill of divorce. And Jerusalem here is called the mother. Zion is described as the mother of all of God's people. So he says, where, thus saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother. That is, show me the bill where I divorced Zion. He said, because I never divorced Zion. See, Zion remained precious in the sight of the Lord, even when the exiles were in Babylon. Zion was still precious. Psalms 137. Follow me, if you will. This is good stuff. It says, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. It says, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our hops on the willows in the midst that are, that, are, that is, while we were uh, in bondage, we, 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 we put our hops on the shelf. We couldn't even play music anymore. For they, for their uh, they cried, they carried us away captive. They that carried us away captive required of us 
a song. They said, and they wasted, and they that wasted us required myrrh, saying, sing us one of those Zion songs. Said the Babylonians who carried us away and who locked us up, they then expected us to be happy, and they said, sing us a Zion song. And they said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Then they said this, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its cunning. Let my right hand lose the ability, its ability. Uh, if I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. You see, Zion stayed special in the eyes of God. And this is good news because the good news here of Isaiah 50 is that if there is no divorce papers, then Zion, despite her situation, is not divorced. And if Zion is not divorced, then Zion still has the legal right to expect God, praise the Lord, to do right by her. For if Zion is still God's wife, if you will, then the wife, the married wife, has more legal authority than any woman in a man's life. The married wife has more legal authority than your mother. The married wife has more legal authority if you're wicked enough and wrong enough to have a mistress, the married wife has more legal authority than she does. And Zion was God's married wife. Even though she were in, I'm preaching good, uh, a strange land. Oh, do you hear me today? And then if you go to Isaiah uh, chapter 57, uh, chapter 52, excuse me. Yes, I, I'm trying to keep the plane on the ground. He says, look at what he says in chapter 52 about Zion. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, old Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments. Get dressed up, old Jerusalem. Jerusalem is where Zion is, the holy city. For henceforth thou shalt no more come unto thee, the uncircumcised, to talk about the Babylonians, and the unclean, says, shake thyself from the dust, arise and sit down, O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and you shall be redeemed without money. You didn't get anything for serving these false gods. But the Lord says, I'm going to redeem you without money. For thus saith the Lord God, my people went down a full time to Egypt to sojourn there. And the Assyrians oppressed them without cause. That is, they ended up in Egypt, Egyptian bondage. The Assyrians oppressed them without cause. Now, therefore, what have I here? saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught. They that rule uh, over them make them to howl. Oh, and the Lord howl, saith the Lord, and my name continually every day is blasphemed. Those people are putting my people under a severe bondage and keeping them in uh, a slavery and mistreating them. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. Then he said this, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of them that bring good tidings, that publish peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publish salvation that says unto Zion, thy God reigneth. You see, God is saying, Zion, uh, I'm still connected to you. 
Praise the Lord. And I'm going to, to bring you out. And then he says in verse 1, he also asks, where are the creditors? Because the, the, the charge was that since God was in debt to some Gentile nation, he had to offer up Zion. But the God of the Bible wanted them to know that he has no creditors. God don't owe anybody anything. If anything, we owe him. He says, I didn't sell you. I didn't sell you, and I didn't divorce you. He said, let me tell you what got you in trouble. Your sins. He said, your transgressions. That's what put you away. It was your sins. And he asked them in verse 2, he says, when I came, he says, why uh, when I came was there no man? Why is it when I sent my preachers to preach to you? Before you fail, why is it when I sent them to prophesy to you? When I sent prophets to warn you, why didn't you obey me? He says, and when I called, uh, why wasn't there any to answer? Uh, God's asking that question today to all of us. He says, I'm calling on you. I'm calling to you. Why don't you answer me? Why don't you get right while, while you still have a chance? Why, why come to church and hear the word of God and still walk away and say, I'm not going to do right? God says, why let the doors close on you? I warned you, Zion. wasn't my will for you to end up in Babylon, but you wouldn't hear me. I wonder how old do you have to be? How many mistakes do you have to make? How many failures must you go through? How much time must you waste before you tell God yes? What does it take? What does it take? How many times does he have to reach out to you and reach up for you before you will say, yes, Lord, I will serve you. Let me preach a little faster here. God says, I, I came to you. I reached out. And then he asked this question. He says, well, perhaps the reason y'all didn't answer me. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit you now. He says, perhaps the reason you didn't answer me was that uh, you felt that my hands were shortened. Maybe the reason you didn't get saved is because you feel like becoming a Christian will get in your way. Maybe the reason you hadn't said yes to the Lord yet and give your heart to God, as the Bible said, is because you feel like if you do what's right by God, you will lose out. I'm here to tell you uh, Christianity is a blessing. You won't lose out if you serve the Lord. You're going to lose out if you don't. God said, well, maybe you all thought that I was weak. Maybe you think that, that uh, a clubbing and being in the gang and running the streets and smoking and drinking and running women and, and uh, doing all these things is better. God says, I want you to know that I'm not weak. He says, I have power. He says, have I no power to deliver? Then he gave us an example of his power. He said, behold, at my rebuke, the seas dry up. God rebuked the Red Sea and the waters divided. Oh, he's so powerful. God says, at my rebuke, the waters dry, the seas dried up, the rivers dried up, the fish began to stink because there was no water. They died of thirst. He says, I clothed the heavens with blackness that is I sent a swarm of locusts and that, those locusts were so black uh, so thick that they covered the sky he says at, with, at my word he says and I make sackcloth their coverings sackcloth was a, a rough cloth a rough cloth that irritated the skin it was, it was used for mourning God says, I put you in sackcloth. I'm so, he has power. So I'm here to say to you today, praise the Lord, if you're on the fence, please get saved. Please serve the Lord. If for no other reason, serve him because it's the best move you can make. Man, don't stay out there. Don't stay out there. Don't stay out there in sin. Don't hang out there with your friends. Don't, don't let this thing pass you by. Dad. You need to become a Christian. You need to let your sons and your daughters see you praying. Mom, you need to become a Christian. Praise the Lord. You need to do it today. Young brother, young sister, don't put this thing off. You're wasting time. Every day that you resist, you move further and further away from the Lord. God says, I have power to deliver. 
as a, as a matter of personal testimony, the best move I ever made in my life. That took place on November the 7th, the 20th, 1977. Nothing compares with when I gave Jesus my heart. Some laughed, some thought it was funny, some thought that it wouldn't last long. But without that decision, I wouldn't be where I am today. Praise the Lord. Without saying yes to Jesus as a little poor black boy living. Oh my, that my mama right there, we didn't have much. But we had sense enough to say yes to the Lord. And telling God yes changed everything. It changed everything. I'm so glad that I said yes to the God who have power to deliver. God who have power to rebuke seas. Good God Almighty. And I heard him say in verse 4, verse 4, verse 5, verse 7, and verse 9. In these verses, you see a phrase that if we can grab hold to it, and really trust it, it will, it will change the way we view life from now on. And the phrase that's in verse 4, verse 5, verse 7, and verse 9 is a name, is a title. You find the words, Lord God. Uh-huh, you see it in verse 4. You see it in verse 5. You see it in verse 7. And you see it in verse 9. Lord God, Jehovah Adonai, Lord God, it means sovereign God, it means God who's in charge, it means God who's in full control, he is the Lord God, thank you Jesus, it means that God is, is in control at all times, in every situation, it means no matter what you're going through, God is right there. Hallelujah. It means that he controls nations. He controls the earth. And so what if you're going through a low place? Just look up and say, Lord God, I know you know what you are doing. I may not know what you're doing. I may not understand. I may not think it's fair. But one thing I know is that you are the Lord God. You are the sovereign God. You rule and super rule. And if it's raining in my life, you allow the rain. And if the sun is shining, you allow the sunshine. Mm -hmm. And if my friends have turned their back on me, you allow that too. And you still got me in your hands that's why i had to sing just a little bit of all in his hands i put it all in his hands this and that this this and that all of my questions all of my problems good god almighty he's able to solve them all and i want to say to somebody who are, who's listening to the sound of my voice that no matter where you are right now no matter what's going on in your life if you're saved and sanctified just reach up and grab hold to the Lord God because the devil can't do no more than God allows the devil can't cross the line that God have drawn and when the Lord say that you've suffered enough, we serve a God that after that you have suffered a while. He make you perfect, strengthen and settle you. When is he going to bring me out, preacher? I'm glad you asked. He's going to bring you out on time. He's going to bring you out. You can't find it on your watch. You can't find it on the calendar. But there is a time that's called due season. And I heard him say, let us not be weary in due season. For we be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we're going to reap if we faint not. Ah! Good God Almighty, instead of fainting, I'm going to set my face like flint. Somebody say, yeah, yeah. Give God glory in the house. Just 
throw your hands up and shout, Lord God. He said, Let the Lord God have given me the tongue of the learned. The word learned literally means student. The word learn means student or listener. God has made me a student. Word learned means disciple. The Lord have given me the tongue of the learned. He's made me his student. Who's the one who made me his student? My teacher is the Lord God himself. And who is me? Notice what he says. The Lord God have given me the tongue of the learned. The me in the text represents several things. Number one, verse four, and down to verse nine. It becomes messianic in its prophecy because it's talking about, among other things, Jesus Christ, the Savior. When Jesus showed up on the scene, his teacher was none other than God himself. God the Father taught Jesus Christ. Notice this, the same nation that spurned Jehovah in the Old Testament is the same nation that spurned Jesus in the New Testament. Here comes Jesus being the true disciple, taught by God himself. But the Bible says he came to his own and his own received him not, but to as many as received him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. And also this passage represents the prophets, the preachers, the teachers that God raised up to preach to the exiles while they were in Babylon. There were preachers that God raised up to tell them, serve him with gladness. Go through your suffering because the Lord God is still in control. He gave me the tongue of the learned. Notice this, that I might know how to speak a word in season. Now the student becomes the teacher for the tongue, the one who's given the tongue of the learned is given that knowledge that he might speak a word to him that is weary. We got to know how to encourage each other, to get each other through. You got to let God teach you. And then when you see your brothers and sisters going through, tell them to hold on. Tell them to serve the Lord. Tell them, you know what the Bible say. You know that weeping may endure for a night. But you know that joy is coming in the morning. We got to know how to give each other a word in season because all of us get tired sometimes. All of us get weary sometimes. But isn't it good when you're going through and you're a little tired that somebody comes up and gives you a word that sets your soul on fire. Yeah! Yeah! I want to give you a chance to give a word in season to somebody. Grab your neighbor by the hand and tell your neighbor you can make it. Hang on in there. The Lord knows where you are. The Lord knows what you're going through. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Praise him, praise him, praise him. I'm almost through preaching. And he said, Lord God, he's given me a word 
to him that is weary. When did he give it to me? He wakens me every morning, morning by morning. He wakens me and he speaks into my ear. We got to learn to cultivate the discipline of listening to God every morning. We got to learn how to let the Lord speak to our lives. Don't you know that those homeless, nameless exiles were glad to hear somebody tell them while they were going through that 70 years that everything is going to be all right. Just serve him and it'll be all right. Verse 5 refers only to Jesus Christ. For only Jesus can say of a truth, the Lord God hath opened my ear and I was not rebellious, neither turned away my back. Only Jesus, Jesus is the only one who can say in John 8 and 29, the last clause, he said, I, for I do always those things that please him. Jesus pleased the Father all the time, every way. The rest of us are depending on God to give us strength to do what is right. And then in verse 6, if you read Matthew's gospel, chapter 26 and verse 20 and 67, 26 and 67, 27 and 26, 18 and 22. Read it when you get home. You'll see references to them blindfolding Jesus, slapping Jesus, hitting Jesus, spitting on Jesus. This prophecy was for the Lord and it lets us know that we might have to suffer a few things ourselves. Thank you, Jesus, but good God, the servant relied in verse seven on the Lord. I want you to follow me here. He says, for the Lord God will help me. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I'm not leaning on my own strength. I'm not leaning on my own power, but God, the Lord God, the sovereign God, he's going to help me. I want to tell somebody that the Lord, he's going to help you. Don't you feel helpless. Don't feel alone. Don't be afraid. But you just tell Jesus, tell him all about it. Tell him about your troubles. Tell him how you feel. Tell him about your fears. He'll help you. Do I have any witnesses here who know that he is He's a helper, that he is, he's a way maker. Have you ever been down and felt like you were down for the count? Felt like you could go no further. Didn't the Lord come in and revive your soul? Can you testify that I was down? But the Lord, oh, the Lord came in. And revive my soul. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So since the Lord, I'm trying to close here, is my helper. And since I know something about God, I know this to be true because I've gone up against a lot of them. Newspapers, news outlets misrepresentations in media note from the white house saying we're watching you all kinds of things preachers plotting against us i can name them i can go down the list i can talk about things i've been lied on criticized rebuked and scorned talked about Sure as you're born, oh Lord, but I'm glad that I can say 
like the man said in verse 7 the first clause he said the Lord God will help me really the second clause he said therefore I shall not be confounded through it all mother the Lord has never let me be humiliated the Lord has never let me be put to shame do I have any people in here who can say through it all the Lord have never let the devil make a fool out of me. The Lord have never let me be made a shame. But through it all, no matter what, looking back on your life, you can see that the Lord have always been there. The Lord have always come through. They were waiting for you to lose your house, but the Lord came through. They were waiting for you to fall on your face, but the Lord came through. They were waiting for your lights to be turned off, but the Lord came through. And then when the lights got turned off, God didn't let them know that the lights were off. The Lord came through while they were saying, she's down for the count, the Lord came through. Isn't it good to know that you serve a God who won't let you be humiliated. He won't let you be made ashamed. He'll hold you up. Isn't he good? Ain't he kind? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Haven't he done it? If he did it before, he'll do it again. Yeah! You ought to praise him because he never left me alone. He never let me down oh, Lord, Lord Jesus you never not one time not one time not one time do I have anybody in here who can say not one time not once I've, I've, can't tell you what I've seen. I've seen the lightning flash. And I've heard the thunder roll. Ooh, Lord. I've felt sins, breakers dashing, trying. To conquer my soul, but I had the voice of Jesus saying, oh, oh, fight on, fight on, for he promised never to leave me. He said he'll never leave me, never leave me alone. Is that what he's saying? Is that what he's done? Has he been there for you? Has he strengthened you? Has he kept you? Has he held you up when you went through trouble? Where was the Lord? He was right there by your side. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every, every, every tongue that's risen against you in judgment shall, shall be condemned. Say yeah, say yeah. yeah. If he may wait for you. Go to hug somebody and tell them, I know that's right. I know that's right. I know that's right. And since the Lord, since the Lord, since the Lord have never.
never let me down. I set my face like flint. I'm marching on. I'm marching on. I'm going all the way. Trust in the Lord that God will. God will. Ah, the Lord will. He'll be there. Since the Lord has been there, since the Lord never let me be humiliated, I'm determined to go on. I'm going to keep going to the clinic. I'm going to keep telling the truth. I'm going to keep standing on the word. I'm going to keep slamming the devil. I'm going to keep casting devils out. I'm going to keep living holy. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep on. I'm going to run on to see what the end is going to be. Why are you so determined? Because he's, his track record is indicative of his future performance. You can tell what God will do based on what God has done. Jesus trusted the Father. Yes, he did. And the Father never let Jesus down. Somebody said, well, he must have. He let Jesus die. He let him kill him. I understand why you would say that, but the only reason you say that is that you don't know why Jesus came. Jesus came to die. See, that, that was the purpose of his coming. He was born. He's the only one. You know, people say, we are born to die. No, we're not. We are born to live until we die. Jesus was born for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He's the only one who was born to die. And when he died, according to Luke's gospel, chapter 9 and verse 31, it wasn't an event that just happened. Luke tells us that when he died, that it was an event accomplishment see see what happens is we sing songs that we all not the deaf thought he had him it may seem like Saturday night but Sunday's on his way and deaf told the grave and grave and deaf was talking said do you still have Jesus well I still got him that ain't what happened the main, the, the main thing that Satan did not want Jesus to do was to get to the cross when you study, you see instances on how they tried to take him and tried to, first they tried to get him with bribery. They tried to make him king before the time. So we'll make you king right now. He said, nope, 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 nope. That ain't the way I'm going to be made. Y'all can't vote me in. I got to die. Then when Satan saw that he couldn't, he couldn't get him to be bribed, the devil then tried to kill him before he got to the cross. Oh my, when Jesus got to the cross, it was an accomplishment. And in that same chapter, in, in the book of Luke, if you also read chapter 9 and verse 51, you will see that Jesus said, now it's time for me to go decrease. I got to go die. And the Bible said, and he set his face straight toward Jerusalem. He said, it's time for me to die. die. Bam. He, you know what he did? He set his face like a flame. It's time for us to set our face. This is who we are. This is what we do. We are holiness. 
We are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. We believe in biblical Christianity. We believe this stuff. This is who we are. This is what we do. And we are not going to vacillate. We're not going to go back and forth. We're not wondering. We're not doubting about the way. But instead, our heart is fixed. Mind is made up to do what the Lord says do. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. For those who will say, Pastor, I want to set my face like flint. I'm, I want to come in all the way. Praise the Lord. Tough ought to call today. God bless you, sir. I want to come in all the way. I want to set my face. This is who I am. Praise the Lord. The enemy trying to put doubt in my mind. But the devil is a liar. Praise the Lord. And this, and this is why I'm at my church. Yeah, we, they call us controversial. I don't know why. Because we don't say anything but what's in the Bible. Amen. Unless the Bible is controversial. And if that's the case, then so be it. Glory to God. Glory to God. But I set my face like, like a flint. I am a Christian. My wife and I were talking about it this morning. I don't want to give too much away, but we, 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 we considered years ago, this is what we do. We're in this. This is what we do. We're, we're, we're in the church. The church is our life. This is what we do. We're going to pull in the same direction because this is what we, got. we do. You can't be... In the church, you, you, you can't marry nobody. You can't get nowhere. You in and he's out. He's in, she's out. One of you sold out, the other don't know. No, that's a formula for disaster. I told her, I said, there's a lot of things that I've taken, a lot of blows that I've taken that I could take and carry on. So, but the one thing that would have made it almost impossible for me would have been have a, if I was out there fighting the good fight of, fight of faith, then got to come home to somebody who don't know if they want to even be saved or not. Come home to a vacillating wife. Not sure whether or not she believes holiness is right. <sighs> good God Almighty. Mine. I'm getting ready to pray. Uh, when I, once I start praying, I want nobody to slip up here. Amen. You can't, you can't, you can't slip. You got to come. Say, well, preacher, I don't want nobody to think that some things been on my mind. You'd be surprised at how few people think stuff like that. Folk don't have time. People don't have time to figure out what you're in the prayer line for. Ah. Oh, glory. Mm -hmm. Mother Turner, I remember the first time I heard that. That little jingle they're playing right now. I was at the temple on Sunday morning. Might have been Ella Turner or somebody. And that hadn't, hadn't occurred to me. That's why it's, temple stay in my mind because I heard concepts, ideas, rationalization that I'd never heard before. And man, I'd never heard anybody, I didn't hear anybody talk about Christianity and say, my heart is fixed, my mind is made up, my heart is fixed, well, do what the Lord said do. Children, my heart is it's fixed and my heart is fixed, fixed, and do what the Lord said. Then I said to myself, you know what? Man, that's something. I think I can do that. I think I can do that. That was David. And then I found out that it was in the Bible. But David said, my heart is fixed. Oh, God, my heart is fixed. I just thought it was a song. Then ran across the scripture. But David said that. I said, now I know I can do it. All I got to do is just make up my mind. 
on the altar who first of all who need to be saved raise your hand we'll lead you to Christ all right now I can pray because everybody now is ready to step over that line and say to God as was preached in the sermon I'm going all the way all the way with Jesus all the way with him I'm going I'm going I'm going I'm going, whatever, whatever the resistance is, you just have to be, just have to be, that just have to be. Whoever don't like it, just they just don't like it. Whoever got something to say about it, other people have their mouth full, let them talk. But I'm going all the way. Amen. Father, we come before you right now with a mind and with a heart to set our face like a No more vacillating. No more back and forth. No more indecisiveness. No more indecision. No more double-mindedness. No more, no more, no more. We put our faith in you. We can't do it on our own strength as was brought out. But with your help, we can do this, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Anoint us, Lord, to go all the way. Anoint me, Lord, to give up. Look at this, to give up. God says, surrender what you've been holding back. Surrender. Surrender that thing. Surrender that desire. Surrender that individual. Surrender that craving. Whatever it is. Surrender that fear. Surrender. Surrender. Just tell the Lord on the altar, I give it up, Lord. I give it to you. 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 I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward in the things of God. I'm taking advantage of this day. I'm taking advantage of it. 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 I'm taking advantage of this. You've been there for me all my life. You've been there for me all of my days. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Lord, with the time I have remaining, I want to be there for you because you've been there for me in the name in the name of Jesus those who are streaming set your face like a flint make up your mind make up your mind to go all the way don't be betwixt and between hallelujah Jesus said it another way. He said, launch out into the deep. Launch out into the deep. Oh, God. We receive it now. Somebody get the oil. We receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name. In the name of Jesus. All the way, Lord. All of the way. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Savior. Oh, my Savior. Hallelujah. 
regardless, 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 regardless. Yea, God, in the name of Jesus. I'm launching out, I'm launching out. I'm launching out, I'm launching out. I'm launching out, I'm launching. Launching out in the name of Jesus. You're a mighty God, a true God, going all the way as a woman of God, going all the way as a young man for Jesus. Oh, God, launching out, lift your hands to him. Launching out, going all the way, Lord, in the name of Jesus, all the way for the Lord. Let go of what needs to be let, let go of. Let it go, let it go in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I'm launching out for you, Savior. For you, my Lord, launching, 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 launching in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, for your glory, touch this man, Lord. Do it in his life. Do it in his life. Touch this lady. Do it in her life, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Let everybody worship him right now. stand there in the name of Jesus somebody ought to praise God with him right now young man said I want to be what the Lord would have me to be I want my strength back hallelujah Jesus can I get a few folk to praise the Lord yes Jesus yes Jesus yes Jesus yes 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 God want to know are you desperate for me you got to reach out to him you got to reach out to him in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's it, brother. Keep calling on him. Keep calling on him. Keep calling on him. You got to come after him with the same vigor, with the same strength, with the same mind that you walked away. If, if you disobey with strength, you gotta come back with strength. You can't run away and then tilt back, but you got to run back. Just like you ran away, you got to run. Yeah! I want you, Lord. I want you, Lord. I want you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. I want you. I want your anointing. I want your power. I want your presence. I don't want the devil. I 
I don't want the world. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Keep on. Keep on. Keep on. Keep on. Keep on. He's my God. He's my God. I got to have this. I got to have it. I got to have it. I got to have it. I got to have Jesus. I got to have Jesus. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to be all that you'd have me to be. I give up my pride. I give up my heirs. I give it up, Lord. I give it up, Lord. I don't care how I look. I don't care what nobody think. I just want Jesus. I just want Jesus. I just want Jesus. Satan, you can't have me. Satan, you can't have me. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I want to be real. want to be saved. want to be holy. I set my face like flint. Jesus. Jesus. I don't care what the people think. I don't care what the girls say. I don't care what the guys say. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I want him for myself. I want him for myself. I don't want him for my mother. I don't want him for my father. But I want him for myself. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Jesus, I want Jesus, I want Jesus, I want Jesus, 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 Jesus. Let the Lord have his way. 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 Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh,
Hallelujah. Thine the glory. At the, at the abortion clinic yesterday, when they called on me, Elder Amachuku said, Bishop, I'm going to call on you to pray. The Holy Ghost says, I, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it with an M or an N. N, Nisha. The Lord said, call her. So I said, I'm going to start singing. I'm going to give you the mic. And you take us to town. And I begin to sing a song. Come here, darling. That says these words. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us. set their face like flint today. You can go your way. Sister Brown, one of our members, Sister K. Brown, her nephew was in a car accident. Her son? Her son. Oh God. We pray for him. We pray that you turn it. We pray that you let that boy live. We pray for a miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. I got to get in touch with him. Oh, God. Did the word bless you today? Hallelujah. Thine the glory. schools, Lord. Move in a home. Move in our families. Move in our church, Lord, please. Oh, Lord. Lord, move in our souls. Yeah, yeah. 